I have been playing a preview of Forza Motorsport for the past 11 days and it's finally time to show you what I've been playing, show you some gameplay and also show and talk about these nine talking points that are on the screen right now. We're going to, through, going to go through them one by one, they're in no particular order so if any specific topic interests you, you can skip straight to that. Let's jump straight into it. So the overview, the preview of Forza Motorsport that I played consisted of the following. It was the initial drive, which is two cars on two different tracks. And then after the initial drive, there was the introduction to the Builder's Cup mode, where I got to choose from three cars to do three races in. Only the Builder's Cup introduction was replayable. So I tried the Builder's Cup introduction in all three of the cars. So let's talk about the car XP leveling. Now, Obviously, you probably know that the way the game works is to unlock upgrades for your car in Forza Motorsport. You have to level it up to a specific level for that upgrade. And a lot of people's issue was how long it's going to take to level up your car just to be able to upgrade it. Well, I did a bit of testing of how long it takes to level up your cars. And during the practice sessions and during the races, you will get quite a considerable amount of XP. And straight off the bat, I do not think that earning XP on cars is as bad as you are thinking. You can see in the top right hand corner is the car level and it goes from level 1 to 50. Now a very important note about the levels is the amount of XP needed per level does not increase. You need the same amount to get from level 1 to 2 as you do from level 49 to 50. It's all the same which makes it a lot quicker than you think. Now you'll get 10 XP for an overtake in a race. You will get 20 XP if you beat your personal best within a sector in a practice session and if you score a sector score of between 8.1 and 8.9 you will get 25 xp and if it's anywhere from 9 to 10 you'll get 50. So if you are consistently in a practice session beating your personal best sectors and getting sector scores that are over 8 you'll level up quite quickly trust me within if you if you make the most of the practice sessions which can be up to 10 to 12 minutes long really doesn't take very long i would say maybe an hour of playing will unlock you more than enough levels to put most of the upgrades that you want on the car and i like this because it makes you appreciate the stock version of a car more now the upgrade system now this ties in a little bit with the car leveling xp but not only do you need the car level to unlock these upgrades, but you also need the CP points, the car points, which is what you use to allocate upgrades to the car. So you don't actually need to buy upgrades for your car. People need to remember this. Yes, you might need to spend a while getting XP for the car to level it up, but you don't actually need credits or anything to buy upgrades for the car. They are technically all free, but the way it works is you will have maybe a thousand car points and an, an exhaust upgrade and an engine upgrade might cost 600 car points. That means you only have 400 left to spend. But if you want to get them back, all you do is take off the engine upgrades and you get that 600 back. So it's just an allocation system kind of thing. And what I noticed is that you get a lot of points. Like the, the amount of car points you have available after you've leveled up maybe 10, 15 times is quite a lot. You've basically got every upgrade bought for you. You don't have to spend any credits or anything on any of the upgrades. Next up, we have sounds. Now, the sounds in the game are good. They do sound very forzery, and I'm sure you know what I mean by that, but it's definitely, I would say, the biggest improvement we have had in any motorsport game by far, definitely. We have had comments from the developers that the sounds in, in Forza Motorsport are going to be more dynamic than ever before. If there is any upgrade that will change the sound of your car, it will do it. And I'll leave a couple of clips on screen right now of what some of the cars sound like. Next up, AI. Now, the preview build that I played on was said to maybe have some 
more clumsy AI than usual, so I can't give my firm opinion on this just yet. But the AI is genuinely a lot harder, a lot smarter, but also a lot more stupid. The AI tends to seem to want to race more cleanly and the AI racing more cleanly will also make him race faster. There are some extremely fast AI in this game, in my opinion, in the cars that I played with, the AI that I was against on certain difficulties were really difficult, but that is what you want from a Wars of Motorsport game. It encouraged me to race cleanly. It encouraged me to learn how to drive the car that I'm in just like the AI had. You can't just join a race and just bash through the pack of cars like some people may have previously done. You've really got to race like a true racing driver, at least that's what I experienced, which is exactly what I want from a Forza Motorsport game, the encouragement to race properly. And the AI difficulty and the way the AI drives, I think is just perfect to make you do that. Now, when I said they are stupid is because they make mistakes, which is also realistic. You will quite often see in a practice session, an AI will sort of miss an apex and or go off the track, go into the gravel, go onto the grass. They will make realistic mistakes along with in races as well. Even someone who's up in second place who you're definitely not going to catch. They will sometimes make a mistake, meaning you can take that second place. So it's all very realistic it encourages you to stay racing clean even if you can't catch people your consistency may help you win in the end because of the AI's mistakes so there's a lot of factors to it but again more more thumbs up in my, in my opinion difficulty now there are lots of different difficulty settings in this game there is AI difficulty there's the starting grid difficulty and there's also the sort of the realism the, the rules I suppose you could say with tire wear and damage I would encourage people to race on the highest rule setting on expert, so the weather tire wear and damage, because that really gives you the best Forza Motorsport experience that it's built for, I would say. AI difficulty wise, it is hard, but pairing with what I said about the topic beforehand, the difficulty is just overall a lot harder. So if you used to play on the highest difficulty, you may not play on the highest difficulty anymore because it is just more difficult. There's more difficulty settings and that's good. As for the starting grid, the starting grid is my one that's a little bit confusing to me because you can choose where you start on the grid and if you start further back and do well, you'll obviously get more credits. But I don't think it's that much more. If you have a look, there's not really much difference between starting in 12th as there is 20th credit wise. I, I don't really know if it's correct or not. And starting further back in the pack does seem to make a difference in how much you can challenge for a podium. But that is just another level of difficulty, choosing where you pick. And I think I think the rewards should be tweaked a little bit on that, maybe depending on the difficulty you've got set. Physics. Now, physics was the thing I got the most experience with because that was just through my entire time of driving these races. And I'd say it's quite noticeable. It's quite noticeable the change in physics and the, the, the track physics as well feels like you have a lot more control over the car and you are absolutely noticing all of the track surface changes as well. The, the red and white curbs, those are very noticeable and you can feel them through your controller and hear them. I don't know how to explain it. You can, you can just tell, you can feel it through the car if it's benefiting you or causing you harm going over these curbs and stuff like that and going onto grass as well. On Forza Motorsport 7, from what I remember, when you went onto grass, it just sort of really slowed you down to a halt and it felt a bit, something felt weird about it. Forza Motorsport does do that as well, but it does it in a way that feels like it should realistically. I don't really know how to explain it. This all pairs up with just being able to get the feel for the car in a much easier way. If the car is understeering too much, which I seem to have an issue with in quite a few of the cars, you could tell that it was understeering too much and you could tell what upgrades it needed to tackle the understeer. All around, all around pluses and Ws in my opinion so far. The assists. The reason the assist is not in the difficulty section is because the assists don't really change the difficulty of the game, they don't change the XP, the credits or anything that you get. But the assists are also finely tuned, like I usually run with manual with clutch, ABS off, steering on simulation and traction off, all, all of it off basically. And what I noticed is that, that, for example, ABS off in this game seems to be a lot more difficult to get right. I don't know if this was just a twerk in the 
preview than I was playing, but ABS off was a little bit more of a faff. So I actually went to ABS on for the rest of my experience on the game and it felt loads better. Manual with clutch as well seemed a lot more difficult to get right. In Horizon 5 games and Motorsport 7, manual with clutch was quite easy to do. You just sort of had to click clutch and gear up at the same time, really, and lift off the throttle. That is definitely not the case in Forza Motorsport. It is a lot more finely tuned than the clutch and the lift off has got to be really nailed to get the gear changes right. I couldn't really get it to work with the flow of the game that I had. So I don't know if that was another issue with the preview that I had. Either that or the manual with clutch is just a lot more finely tuned. The simulation steering felt okay. Obviously it catches you out sometimes, but no more than usual. Traction off and stability off was, in my opinion, really necessary to feel the car properly. I really didn't like racing with traction control. Now I only got to experience the three cars you've probably seen gameplay of, so there wasn't really any high powered cars to experience. My opinion on traction and stability control might change when I do. That's what I think of the assists. And the final one is miscellaneous, such as like assists and stuff like that. Sorry, settings, I mean. The amount of settings in the game is very, very respectable and very generous. You can access the settings of the game before you've even started the initial drive, the introduction or anything. It takes you straight into the settings. So you can tune your wheel, tune your controller buttons. You can change the difficulty, You can, uh, assists. The FOV, accessibility settings, there's a lot of them. I'll try and scroll through all of them on screen right now. But there's there's quite a lot. There's, there's the amount that you'd want from a Forza Motorsport game. You can really fine-tune the hood as well. When you're practicing or racing, you might find yourself thinking there's way too many pop-ups on the screen, like for the penalties and the XP. You can turn all that off if you want. So there's a very generous amount of settings. The menus. Now, because I was stuck to a very specific Builder's Cup a mode I guess I couldn't really experience much of the menus but from what I did so far it is pretty good I think we'll have to wait until the full game to where I can get an opinion on the menu system and stuff like that well guys that is my experience with Forza Motorsport I hope it's been helpful interesting or all of the above I don't really know make sure to subscribe for more motorsport content I'm sure there'll be plenty of it and I'll see you all later